Hey guys, I wanted to go over some bulk cards that I have recently picked up and just show you the binders really. Um, I picked these cards up from flea markets as well as from friends who are moving on from the game, which is more and more. And the, this is just part of their collection. Obviously it is some of the better cards of their collection, but it's not all of it. I did take out some really valuable ones that I didn't know were valuable until later. So what you have here is just a collection of randos. And that does it for blue. So we have a binder for each color pretty much. Or very close to it. Oh, this is the princess one. I put all my stuff in these binders because Ultra Pro is extremely cheap at least at my local place. Hypergenesis is worth some money, although it is banned in modern. A ton of these, and this is pretty much what you can expect to get from Craigslist, eBay, just bulk collectors. This card has gone up a little bit in price. This card is beautiful, just random stuff, and they come in boxes or crates, and you just have to spend your time picking them out and picking the really good ones. Go <laughs> Gary Graytro, yes, this card is no longer what it used to be. It's much more expensive, but even something like this elf here is very expensive. I think it's a dollar or two. Gemstones, any older cards, Awakening is pretty good. So when you're buying like older collections from eBay and Craigslist, or from a friend, you do get a lot of really good stuff you don't know is good until you start investigating. Um, this card has been re... Oh, the Foundry has been reprinted. This card has not, sort of the meek. But unfortunately, I feel like there was a lot of Foundries. I don't know where they all, all are, but Relics... Especially if your friends played old school magic, older magic, you will come across a ton of valuable cards in their collection. Like Liliana's Caress, I don't know why this is a few, I think like four or five dollars, which is pretty crazy to me. Zombie Masters, you can tell my friends played during uh, Revise. And Zombie Master was considered a very good card back in 5th edition and Revise, and that was, I don't know why. Dark Pack, Meta Spirit, Desecration Demons, like a dollar, I guess. And just random stuff that you get from Craigslist. This like stuff is EDH gold. It is extremely valuable. I want to say flea markets probably make 50% of this pile. And then Friends Collections make another 50%. Tassiger, of course. Random from Devote Exile or from the Vault Legends. That card was so expensive when it first came out. Of course, one of my favorite cards from Homeland, so representing Homeland, Exhum. There was a ton of reanimates. Reanimate as a card has just skyrocketed in price to something that I don't really understand why it's that expensive. I think it's like $10 right now, and I literally have probably 20 copies from just buying collections and being bulk. Chain Lightning, sometimes you see those. Promos. If you're buying collections from casual players, you will find casual cards. But a lot of times these casual cards, because of EDH, back when they were playing were not valuable, like Dragon Speaker Shaman. And they just come from random sets. It's not like a typical collection, which makes it fun because you have, I believe this is Knights vs. Dragon Edition. That's a long time ago. Price of Progress, and when you if you find a box of Exodus, you're in pretty good shape because Exodus back then, or you find a Time spir Spiral, just because you are guaranteed to have these cards like this one, because back in the day, the card was no good. So who knew, knew this was a five dollar card today? Like you just want to know that. Balance was always very good, very OP. But like this card is a common. I'm pretty sure this card is a common. It's worth a few dollars. But if you play during Code Snap, you have no idea it's actually worth a few dollars. 
assuming like these collections mainly come from people who played a long time ago and they no longer play today and all the way up to modern players who love a particular promo this is a beautiful promo one of my favorite ones so i was glad to pick them up like something like this from tempest you don't even know if it's a common a rare or well they didn't have mythics back then but it's worth like a dollar or two like crazy right and obviously one of my favorite cards because i love the death and taxes version with the blink Timely reinforcements, if you are in M12, you're sure to find at least a few play sets of those. And the last binder, before we go on to my collection binder, which is my speculation binder. Multicolor, so a lot of this is multicolor. Death Rite Shamans galore, because back in RTR, they were the best card. Anna Fezzers, love her. Um, Boris Charms, like, you literally go through these things and you're like, huh, there's a place that Boris Charms here. There's a place set of these full arts. Squander Resource is not bad. This lion is one of my favorite foundries. Here, okay, here are all the foundries. Even finding a hippo from group, group hug is worth money. So you pretty much, every time you buy a larger collection, as long as what it is, is the person is not like you will find tons of these little guys, which are worth, you know, money. I thought this Merfolk was worth money, but it must have been, like, the, the corrupted version of him. And even, like, Counter Squall, like, it's worth money. It's actually worth a lot more. Go go on ahead and check it. It's worth a lot more. But the real value is probably in the lands. That's where the majority of the value can be found in these older collections. As long as they did not like sort through the collection that much and they are not into MTG finance, buying a larger collection, you will win out every time. Stage is very good. These lands, Ancient Zygot is worth a few dollars. Mines and stuff, very, very good cards. And you will find tons of them in the older sets. I even found a Blink Moth Nexus. Some foil, some definitely some of these really good Urza lands. Some more foils, a foil snow covered island, a foil snow covered swamp. Um, ghost quarters worth a few dollars. And this card is quite valuable. And then some of these uh, lands, which artifact lands, I think some of them are worth like four or five dollars right now. Essentially, as long as the person that you're buying this collection from is not into MTG Finance, you will at least make double, if not triple your money back uh, if you're in it to collect it. So now selling it, you will lose a majority of your money that you just theoretically made because selling something like this, let's say it's $3, you're not going to get one fifty for it. You'd be lucky to get a dollar for it by list. Anyways, bye guys.